I'm in the process of uh, generating a curve on this 8 inch uh, mirror blank and I'm using diamond tools. I'm using a oh I guess this is about a three and a half inch diamond tool um, and I'm also using um, a smaller wheel uh, with diamond pellets on it. And this is about uh, maybe two and a half inches diameter and uh, this blank is Pyrex and it's considerably harder than an optical glass so um, one of the things that you have to be careful of is that the diamonds will, can actually become dull and uh, you know their diamonds are very sharp but they, they do become dull if they uh, if they aren't regenerated and and what is supposed to happen is that the, the glass swarf coming off is supposed to erode the matrix that the diamonds are embedded in. Now if enough matrix uh, isn't removed the uh, not enough new diamonds are come you know come to the surface the old ones are supposed to fall off new ones are supposed to take place and continue grinding. So uh, that's the reason that uh, a diamond wheel may slow down and uh, actually it'll it'll just the, the surface starts to getting uh, smoother and smoother and it actually quits working. So what you want to do is to um, keep the surface rough. Now you can you could use some coarse grit I suppose with steel and rough up the surface um, but I've got a another um, this is a, a cup wheel for, for a hole, hole cutter and it, it will um, it's got a real small contact area and, and I can use it by hand to really rough up the surface. So I'm going to start out with a small wheel here that I'm using. And then I've got a lot of weight stacked up on this thing. Start some water going here. And I'll show you how I rough up the surface. Now I don't have to do that all the time, just every so often uh, when I feel like it's slowing down you'll need to rough up the surface and, and you can really feel a noticeable increase in the noise as the diamonds are, are um, working better and removing more material and the, the, uh, the glass surface is actually a lot more coarser as it should be. Okay, so I ran this smaller wheel a while, and I'm going to put the other wheel on. And change the stroke so that it goes from edge, it always has to cross center and, and goes up to the edge.
So now when the pencil is completely gone on the edge, you want to stop and, and uh, go back to a smaller wheel. Because if you're grinding the edge down, that means you're losing, you're not really gaining a whole lot by, by doing that. You always want to take it out of the center and clean up the edge last. When I got the curve to where I wanted it, the F3, then I flying around it and poured a pitch lamp and polished it. Uh, that's nothing uh, that interesting. Um, but here's the um, ronchigram of the mirror after it's polished. And it's just, this is outside of focus. And it's, it's a little bit on the oblate side. But uh, that's okay. Now for parabolizing, I'm doing a combination of an oval stroke and just a cross stroke with a sub diameter tool. Like, it goes like this, sort of. And, and a slow um, rotation on my polisher as I can go. Just kind of an oval stroke. And then across the center. And oval. Across the center. All by hand. So here's my 8 inch after about an hour's worth of polishing. Uh, still have a lot of fringes left to, to ace for eyes. Um, there's about twice as many that were showing here when, from the very beginning. This was done on my Zygo off near a null setup. Now after I've been polishing an hour and 20 some minutes now and it's become um, more and more aspheric as I approach the parabola. Uh, a, a regular pitch lap will want to start grabbing uh, because of the asphericity it doesn't want to run smoothly. So one of the things I'm trying here is to put LP66 on my lap and the way I did that was just to take some um, acetone, rub it over the top of the pitch, makes it sticky, put this down and press it. And actually, it has a bunch of holes in it, so it actually run, uh, presses into those holes and stays on real, really well. And it helps it uh, run real well. This material, by the way, uh, I've polished thousands of uh, optical lenses using it, so it, it, it'll give a very smooth surface. It's not the same as uh, the uh, Pellon pads that a lot of ATMs use. Um, this is called LP66. And um, the other thing, um, as it becomes more and more aspheric, whenever I, uh, whenever I do the polishing stroke, um, I put a little more pressure on the edge as I as I go across, but you always do want to want to do a full uh, full across the mirror stroke. You never don't want to short because you can real easily uh, dig a hole in the center if you're not careful. So uh, I do a stroke like this, just put, putting pressure on the edge and then let it rotate and do a full chordal stroke. Just a short W. Let it let it rotate. And I don't get any of the grabbing you get with straight pitch. And I'm putting pressure mainly with my thumb here about halfway out. Look at short W. So 
So here's my mirror after an, another hour's worth of work, and it's getting close to being uh, fully corrected, except for a bump in the center of about two fringes. And that it's a bump and not a hole, because if I um, go long, if I go longer in radius. Like here, you see that the uh, the bump straightens out with the rest of the mirror curve. So it's a bump. I need to fix the bump. So now I do want to try to dig a hole in the center. Ba basically, dig a hole uh, to get rid of my bump. So I need to do a short stroke with accented pressure. You turn the seen on here. I want to accent a pressure sort of like I was doing before with my thumb on the edge but just with a short stroke across the center. Shouldn't take very long to do that. Rotate the lamp. You probably don't want to go very long. You want to check it often because it's real easy to dig a hole and you don't want a hole. Here's my mirror after I uh, worked down that center bump. I actually went a little bit too far and dug a slight hole in the center. But in any case, that's going to be covered up by a diagonal. But you got mail on your server and you got mail. Let's classify, you know, some.